In the last stream, we were working on setting up this fusion multi-block reactor over here. This machine allows us to take elements and combine them together to make new elements that previously we didn't have access to. This is super useful because at this point in time, our goal is to complete the pack and craft the finished program end of file item. To do that, we have to craft together these four creative items, the creative generator, creative fluid tank, creative blaze cake, and the creative motor, along with a bunch of ultimate ingots, a bunch of netherite, a few more ultimate singularities, and some creative essence. And that's really what we are now singularly focused on doing. And the reason the fusion reactor is helpful there is that in order to make the ultimate ingot, we need a lot of ingots for elements that we currently don't have. The main one that we looked at in the last stream was yttrium because the only thing currently stopping us from making the uh, the brother to the fusion reactor the fission reactor is yttrium yttrium is required to make the fission core and yttrium is currently an element that we don't have a large amount of in fact i think that we made our first bits of yttrium in the last stream we did indeed and the plan for today is going to be to hopefully set up a system to automatically duplicate a large number of any element that we already have one of. The idea here, if we look at the recipe for yttrium, is that in this pack, there is a, a special custom recipe for duplicating elements, and it's this one right here. If you combine one of any element in the game with one skystone and 500 millibuckets of water, you can basically double that element. And so the idea here, is that if we need to make a bunch of yttrium in order to make a yttrium ingot, uh, specifically you need 16 yttrium per yttrium dust, which you can then smelt into one yttrium ingot. If we want to get 16 yttrium, all we should have to do is place one yttrium into a basin from create using a mixer and a superheated blaze burner. If we do that, we should then be able to combine the one yttrium with 16 skystone and eight buckets worth of water, and that will produce us the yttrium required. We need to do that for every single element on the list here. The good news is that we don't quite have to do it as much as initially thought, because as I mentioned in the last episode, really all we need to do here is craft one creative supply upgrade, because once we have one creative supply upgrade, we can use this kind of in the same way that you would use a creative vending upgrade in previous packs, in that we can use it to get an infinite amount of any item that we already have at least one of. And so basically, we need to make one of these, which is four ultimate ingots and four ultimate singularities with one creative essence. Once we have the one creative supply upgrade, we then also need one extra of each item. So in total, we need five ultimate singularities and five ultimate ingots, and I guess also two creative essences, although the creative essence is very easy to make. Once we have that, we can use four ultimate ingots and four ultimate singularities to make one creative supply upgrade. And then we can use the creative supply upgrade on an omnidirectional hopper to get an infinite amount of ultimate singularities and an infinite amount of ultimate ingots using the one extra of each that we have. And at that point, obviously that allows us to make an unlimited amount of creative supply upgrades. And once we have an unlimited amount of creative supply upgrades, making all of the creative items here is incredibly easy the generator is just an ultimate energy cube with a supply upgrade the tank here is just a tank with a supply upgrade you get the idea the cake is a blaze cake with a supply upgrade and then finally the creative motor is a regular electric motor from create with a supply upgrade and we can then craft all those together very easily into the finished program so the hard part is just getting five each of the ultimate singularities and the ultimate ingots. The ultimate ingots, I don't think are gonna be quite so bad. The ultimate singularities are going to be a little trickier because every single one of these singularities requires 10,000 of a given item. And that means that we're going to need 50,000 oxygen. We're going to need 50,000 encrypted ingots. We're going to need 50,000 nitrogen, 50,000 hydrogen. You get the idea. We need a lot of stuff. But we're gonna start though by seeing if we can't set up that system that's going to allow us to duplicate any resource that we like. So to make that happen, we do need our blaze burner. And I think what we're probably going to want to do here is almost certainly upgrade our boiler. Right now we're generating 2,048 stress units from our one boiler here, which is being powered solely by our campfire. But I'm hoping that what we should be able to do is uh, drop this guy down. And if we can continuously give fuel to that blaze burner, that's gonna increase the amount of 
power that we can generate from this boiler. You'll see just with the fuel, it goes up to 16,384. And uh, we could even get more out of this as well if we make the boiler taller and add even more uh, steam engines to it. Uh, for that, we are going to need more copper sheets. That should be fine. We have a bunch of copper lying around. We can go ahead and drop that over here. That's going to very slowly but surely start doing its work. I think, do we have what it takes to make that faster? We do, nice. Oh, of course, because we now have 16,384 uh, stress units. Once we have the sheets, we can do this. And if we get four more fluid tanks, which by the looks of it is going to require uh, four more barrels, that is fine. That's also going to require some more slabs. That is also completely fine. Let's just make a bunch of those. And then let's see about crafting up a couple of barrels. We only need three, but you know, we'll make a bunch anyway, just to be safe. We might end up making this a little bit taller in the future. But if we do something like this, this is going to increase the capacity of the boiler. And so now, although with just the one blaze burner, it's still only going to allow us to produce 16,384 stress units. If we were to add a second blaze burner here and feed that as well, we would be able to run two of these engines, both capable of producing 16,384 stress units. The reason that we need that much stress is that I want to set up this element duplication system many, many times. Like I want to have maybe eight of these mechanical mixers all going at preferably max speed, which I believe is 1,024 stress units um, at the max. So these right now are using 768. They're pretty close to max. Uh, if I crank this all the way up to 256, you'll see that this thing here is indeed using 1,024 stress units. And so if we wanted to run 16 of these, we would need one dedicated engine for that. And uh, it's not just the mechanical mixer that we're going to need. We do need more create uh, contraptions on top of that. Specifically, we have to automate the production of Skystone. Skystone, thankfully, you can make by deploying lithium onto stone. Stone, we can, of course, generate an infinite amount of using our igneous extruders, and we can make more of those should we need them. And lithium, of course, we can duplicate in the same system that we're using for everything else. Lithium is the one exception to the rule here where you actually get three lithium for every one lithium that you put in because, of course, lithium is required to, to, in order to make the sky stone to make more of any element. So we kind of need to set up a system initially to duplicate lithium. Uh, and then once we have a staggeringly large amount of lithium, we can then use that lithium to produce a staggering large amount of any other element that we like. The tricky part about the blaze burners is keeping them fed, right? We need to keep them fed continuously with fuel. Thankfully, Create adds uh, a very easy answer to that question, and in my opinion, a very cool answer to that question as well, that is the mechanical arm, this one right here. And I think right out of the gate, I'm gonna try and make two of these. I want to use one of them to feed the blaze burners underneath our smeltery here, and I think we're also going to need a second mechanical arm in order to feed the other blaze burners that we're going to use to duplicate things like lithium. Let me quickly grab uh, some lithium out of the system here because this is the first thing we want to duplicate, not yttrium. Uh, in order to duplicate the lithium, we need a superheated blaze burner, which means we need to keep the blaze burners fed with blaze cakes. So we are going to have to automate the production of blaze cakes, which I don't think should be too difficult. Getting an infinite amount of lava shouldn't be too bad. And the blaze cakes themselves are made with sugar, which we can easily automate, eggs, which we can get from chickens, and cinder flour, which is just netherrack pulverized. We can make netherrack automatically using the material stoneworks factory if we have an infinite amount of lava and water. And again, the water is easy with the sink and the lava we need for this anyway. So we do need to set up an infinite amount of lava. So that should be fine. But my point was that we're also going to need a second mechanical arm to feed all of the blaze burners that need to be superheated with blaze cakes. So if we want to make two mechanical arms, we need two of these precision mechanisms. These are made in the mixer, four iron nuggets, one brass casing, two regular cogwheels, and one large cogwheel. That shouldn't be too bad. Uh, brass casing, of course, we do need to do using the spout and some copper casing, and the copper casing we get with a copper sheet and andesite casing. So andesite casing, I think I have a, a decent amount of. Yeah, we have 11. Now, we also need more brass casing for the actual arm itself, so I'm going to need four of these. That is actually completely fine. Now, to make this work, I am gonna have to temporarily steal this blaze burner from here. Although, what I think I might do real quick, uh, right now we are out of blaze powder. We've just got four, and we don't have any blaze rods either. So what I think I'm probably going to want to do is grab our blaze spawner, which is inside of this cardboard box, quickly go and swap that out for the 
with a skeleton spawner, which is currently the one placed down in our mob farm. That's going to allow us to start getting blaze rods again, which is going to come in useful later because we're going to need quite a lot of blaze burners and each blaze burner does require uh, 16 blaze powder. So while we wait for the uh, the blaze rods to come in, let's head back over here and temporarily, I'm gonna go ahead and steal this and we'll place this down under our mixer, like so. Once we have that down, we then need some of those copper plates that we made previously. Let's go ahead and drop two of these and two of these. We can then heat this guy up and turn this down to allow it to run. Then realize that I actually need four of these, not two of these, so let's do that again. And once we got our four copper casings, we then need to grab our spout, which I believe should be hanging out in the system. If it's not, it might be hanging out around here. It totally is. Okay, that's cool. So we currently have lava in it. I think we need to change that because I'm pretty sure we need uh, brass in here. We do. So let's get rid of this and then instantly replace it. We can then get rid of this temporarily. And if we grab a fluid pipe, just like we did previously, we should be able to connect that up like so, uh, make sure that we have a wrench so we can disconnect that. And then of course, re-break this again because now it's full of cobalt. We did lose a little bit of cobalt there, but that should not be a problem for us. And then now we just need to make sure that we have brass at the bottom of our smeltery, which we do set that to extract. That's gonna fill up. And then from there, let's just drop all four of those onto the depot. And one by one, those will be transformed into brass casings, which we can then take and should be able to hopefully craft up somewhat easily into the mechanical arm. Uh, we do also need some more brass sheets and some andesite alloy. Andesite alloy, I'm fairly certain we have, we do indeed. And then brass sheet wise, we don't have a lot, but we do have our metal press over in here. Let's go ahead and get a stack of brass sheets going. And while we wait for that, let's grab some of the big and small cogwheels. And real quick, I think I will go and teach our system how to make some of the basic create items here just because I think going forward, we're gonna set up quite a large create system to uh, to duplicate all of these elements and being able to request things like uh, big cogwheels and small cogwheels and even things like shaft as well is gonna be uh, very useful for us. We can then take four small cogwheels, two big cogwheels, and then I think it was just iron nuggets we needed after that. Uh, so let's drop in two of our brass casing four small cog wheels, two big cog wheels, and a bunch of iron nuggets. I don't think it was that many iron nuggets, but I don't think it also matters if you have too many either. It does not. So let's take some coal, heat this up, and that should be that. We should have everything we need to get the precision mechanism, and we should also then have everything we need to get our two mechanical arms. One, and two. Nice, let's do a quick quest claim for that one cryptocurrency, you'll have to see it. And the benefit of the mechanical arm here is that what we can now do is we can grab another depot, which we did accidentally make too many of earlier, but that's now nice to have. We can then place the depot down. Let's say for now, maybe right about here. Then let's move our blaze burner back over to the boiler like this. With the arm, you have to specify your inputs and your outputs before you put the arm down. And in fact, I'm gonna move this the uh, depot here. I'm gonna put the depot here. Basically, we can right click the arm onto the depot and it's gonna say take items from depot. You could right click it again to make it deposit items to depot. But in this case, we do want to take items from depot. In this case, we're going to take coal from the depot and then we're gonna right click it onto the blaze burner and we're gonna deposit items to the blaze burner. Um, you can't change this to take items from the blaze burner because there's, it's impossible. There's no item you can take from the blaze burner. Once you have your inputs and outputs set, you can then place the mechanical arm down and this mechanical arm now, when powered, will take items from the depot and give them to the blaze burner. For example, if we put some coal onto the depot and then we spin the mechanical arm, which is going to require a small cogwheel, like so. Again, for now, we could show it off with a crank, although momentarily we are gonna connect it up to our main network. If I were to do something like this and spin it, we'll see the arm, hopefully, grab the coal, take it, and pass it over to the blaze burner. Nice, and it's gonna keep doing that until the blaze burner is full on coal. Uh, the blaze burner can take a little bit of coal, like this coal isn't wasted, it increases the amount of burn time that the uh, blaze burner will burn for, uh, but this 
arm will keep taking coal and keep giving it to the blaze burner until the blaze burner can't take any more. And then the blaze burner will slowly burn through that coal. And once the blaze burner can accept another piece of coal, the, the arm will then take it. So no coal is wasted during this, uh, this situation here, which is good. And the even better news is that if we quickly go ahead and grab some of the blaze rods that we've been getting from our blaze spawner, we can then uh, craft those down. And in fact, actually, is it better to crush these with the crushing wheels? It is. We uh, get three instead of two blaze powder per blaze rod, and we have a 25% chance of getting extra blaze powder as well. So I see no reason not to run those very quickly through our uh, set of crushing wheels here. And once we have those, we can get our second blaze burner, place that down next to the first one underneath the, uh, the boiler, and then we can actually specify that the mechanical arm take from the depot, but give to both blaze burners simultaneously. Thankfully, the blaze burner itself is not too difficult. Uh, the empty blaze burner, that is. It's one netherrack and four iron plates. We can then combine all of that up in the combiner to get ourselves an actual blaze burner. And then if we place that over here, we can now pick this guy up. And this time we want to specify that I want it to collect from here and then deposit to both here and here. We can then place it down. And again, if we start to crank, it's going to take the coal and by default, I believe it will evenly distribute the coal between the two blaze burners. It totally does. Nice. There are some configuration options available here. Uh, if I get rid of this cogwheel real quick, we should be able to see. Yeah, right here. It says uh, when multiple outputs available round robin. Uh, if you want, you can uh, use the scroll wheel to, uh, to change that while holding the wrench. So now it says when multiple outputs available prefer first target or we can uh, scroll again, force round robin, or back to round robin. Uh, force round robin basically means it will give one item to this, and then it will only give, like normal round robin, it will give an item to this, then try and give an item to this, but if it can't, it will, we will give another item to the first one. Forced round robin means that it will give an item to the first one, but then it won't give another item to the first one until it's given an item to the second one. So uh, you kind of, again, enforce the round robin. For now, us with regular round robin will be fine. And I think really, the only final piece of the puzzle here that we're going to need is our digital resource simulator. If we take this, which currently is full of platinum, and we place it down over here, what we should be able to do fairly easily is craft up a chipset for coal, that being this one. Um, I think we are going to need another null chipset, which means we are going to need another shulker shell. So we need uh, lutetium and calcium carbonate, both of which I'm pretty sure we have, lutetium and calcium carbonate. We do indeed. Fantastic. Let's go and grab ourselves another shulker shell. Boom. Boom. We can then craft up a basic chipset and craft that into a coal chipset just as soon as we craft eight blocks of coal. And then from there, I'm fairly certain we should be able to place this into here like that. And I think that we can just use regular old item pipes to extract from the resource simulator and send the coal directly over into the depot. Right now there's 51 coal there. If we set that to extract and grab an ultimate item pipe, we can do this. And then now, slowly but surely, of course, chat is right, I do need to put my quantity and speed upgrades in there. Even without these, I think it might have been fast enough, but especially with these, it is going to be fast enough. The depot works in a bit of a strange way. You'll see right now nothing is moving over, but if I take the coal off here, um, I'm fairly certain. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's trying to extract the chipset. Let me go in here and add coal to the whitelist. That should hopefully mean, there we go, look at that. We got a full stack of coal transferred over and I'm actually intrigued. I don't know if it's gonna take, like if it's gonna keep it full or if it's gonna wait for it to be empty before it moves another stack over. It doesn't really matter either way. Yeah, and no, I think it will wait until it can move some over before it does so. But uh, either way, this should keep both of our blaze burners full of fuel. The only thing we need to do now is actually connect this mechanical arm up to the rest of the system to make sure that it will continue running constantly. And in fact, we should be able to do that fairly easily if we just do something like this, but not in that way. If instead we do it like this and like that, there we go. Look at that. The arm is going faster now because we're not manually cranking it and it's going to keep both of these fed. And you'll see right now we're still only producing 16,000 stress units via this one steam engine. But if we look at the boiler, it is currently level two and can output 32,768 stress units. I'm fairly certain that in order to get that amount of stress out, we need to get another steam engine. Uh, as per usual, these are fairly easy to make. We do need one golden plate. Let me bookmark the engine and uh, quickly grab 
at least one gold plate here. We can once again speed this right up now. Fantastic. Let's make yet another steam engine, like so. And this is perfect because this steam engine is the one that I intend to use to power our resource duplication system. So we can add a shaft to this one, like so. And now we have two steam engines, which are both outputting 16,000 stress units each. Uh, the 16,000 on this one is not at all linked to the 16,000 on this one because they're both pulling from the 32,768 that we're generating with the boiler. So real quick, what I'm going to do now is craft up, I think, uh, maybe six mechanical mixers to mix the sky stone and the water. I think two deployers to allow us to turn uh, stone into sky stone, as well as six more blaze burners to actually run the, uh, the mechanical mixers. All right, so not too long later, and we now have six more blaze burners, six more mechanical mixers, six basins, uh, a few more depots, and two deployers to go alongside our current mechanical arm. So my plan is to build hopefully a somewhat compact system here. We'll see how well that goes. But I'm thinking of having the mechanical arm in the middle, and then I want to have my six basins around that. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. Because we're going to automate the production of blaze cakes. We're then going to have a depot that the mechanical arm pulls blaze cakes from and feeds all of the uh, the blaze burners, right? Uh, we'll maybe have that, you know, not there. Maybe like uh, here, right? That's where we'll, we'll, we'll put our blaze cakes. Then we need to have basins on top of each of these and then whisks on top of each of those like that i then think we'll do something like we'll get some more gray simulation block and i'm going to raise the uh the next two depots up like this just so they're in line with everything else and then we're going to have our deployers here not like that we're gonna have our deployers here and here like this and uh, the idea here of course being that those deployers are going to make the stone so we then need a sink another sink which we might not be able to make. We could be low on clay. I think that is indeed the case. I don't think we have uh, any clay at all, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. We should probably almost certainly definitely make the clay chipset. Just because otherwise I have to keep going back to the mining dimension to get dirt or just to our system to get dirt and then breaking that down and, uh, and manually using our chemistry to make clay, which is not the hardest thing in the world, but is a bit of a pain in the backside to still be doing this far on into, uh, into the pack. Okay, so there's 10 clay. That is more than enough to get us the, uh, the clay chipset. And we do have that extra shulker shell from earlier. So boom, let's go and drop that in temporarily in place of the, uh, the coal here. So if we just do one of these, take this guy out, and then maybe do, you know, one of these. We can then grab a couple of stacks of clay. And that should hopefully carry us over probably for the remainder of the pack. But going forward, if we need more clay, it's just a case of putting the uh, the chipset here back into uh, the resource simulator, right? We can then craft up a bunch of blocks, smelt those over in our rainbow furnace. And that does remind me that what I might want to do here, potentially, is, um, is upgrade this diamond furnace. Because as I mentioned earlier, we need a lot of encrypted ingots. We need uh, 40, 50,000 encrypted ingots. Yeah, we need a lot of encrypted ingots. Right now we have uh, two, 3,000... 200 and we are now getting encrypted off faster or we should be getting encrypted off faster thanks to our um speed improvements over here it looks like right now it's this guy that's a little slow because he's not connected to the rotation speed controller we can change that if we just uh, rotate this guy not like that but instead like that we could then try and add in maybe like another gearbox here and connect that guy up do we have a spare gearbox the answer to that question is no but that's fine we can make a new one and then if we do this i don't think that uh, of course that does affect our crushing wheel so we are going to need another one uh, to counteract the counteraction of the uh, of the rotation so if we do this that gets the crushing wheels going the correct way again we can then take some of our shaft do something like that that's going to increase the speed of this guy quite substantially which should hopefully mean that these guys over here are working much faster at getting us encrypted at all. The problem then is how fast we are smelting it, which is currently slowed down by the uh, the bonsai pot. The bonsai pot is currently our limiting factor. However, the good news, of course, is that we do now have a new system very nearby that is generating coal for us, right? And so although it's going to look real janky, 
if we do something like this, that should begin taking coal over here and making that just a little faster. And then, of course, from there, if we go to the, uh, the Iron Furnaces mod, we can also make the speed augment with a little bit of paper to allow this thing to go just a little bit faster than it already is. It's possible in the future that we might end up swapping this out for the Rainbow Furnace if we end up with a large amount of encrypted ore. But uh, for the time being, that's not going to be a problem. Just to be on the safe side, I am going to go ahead and grab a few of these uh, draw upgrades in the hopes that we kind of passively bank up on encrypted ore here. Um, I don't think I'm going to come back later to 50,000. I think we are going to have to improve our system here that's producing it to make it much, much faster with uh, potentially many more deployers uh, and especially many more deployers generating the actual encrypted matter itself. But uh, for the time being, this is going to be a lot faster than it was previously. Either way, back over here. This is coming together. And I think what I am probably going to do is craft up a bunch of laser nodes from Laser.io and place those in between the basins here. The idea with this is that we need to set up a system that, uh, also we were making a sink, that's what we were doing. Did I have uh, what it takes to make the sink? I do, nice, okay, so the sink can go down, uh, let's say right about uh, here, maybe. And the good thing about laser IO is that we can transfer things around without too many pipes. So once we have more nodes, I'm gonna put one between each basin, like that. Uh, we can also use this node to extract water from the sink and give it to all of the basins. And then I think we also want one uh, here as well. That's going to allow us to interact with all three of these depots as well. And I think we might also need one here so we can provide items to the deployers. Because what we need to do is we need to uh, provide stone to the depot here, which should be easy enough. Then that's going to get deployed with, uh, with lithium to produce Skystone. That Skystone then needs to be taken via one of these nodes and given and distributed between all of these basins. These basins also need to re uh, receive lithium, which we can take from uh, whichever node has lithium. I think we are gonna have to put a, a storage drawer down somewhere to actually hold the lithium. But so uh, we can take that lithium that's in a storage drawer, divide that up as well between all the basins. Uh, and then we also need to give them all water, which you can take from the sink and using the laser nodes, divide it up between the basins. Once they all have water, skystone and lithium, they're gonna start to produce more lithium. That lithium then needs to be taken from the basins and given back to the deployers to be used on the stone to make more lithium to be given to the basins in the form of skystone with more lithium and with more water to duplicate the process uh, and infinitely create the process of, of producing lithium. That's the plan. It sounds a little wild, but I think this should all work. Now, before we can go any further with this, we do need to get those blaze cakes up and running because we need an endless supply of blaze cakes being given to these blaze burners before anything can be done. So the Twitch chat has reminded me about this uh, fantastic item from Create here. This is the hose pulley. This is super useful because what it allows you to do is it allows you to generate an infinite amount of any liquid that you have a large amount of. Specifically, if you place the hose pulley down, basically it acts like a pump. So if I was to place it into like a, a small pond and then start extracting from it, it would slowly but surely drain the pond of its water. However, the way that Create have coded it makes it so that if the pond, quote unquote, that the hose pulley is pulling from contains more than 10,000 blocks of a given liquid, it will treat it as an infinite source and won't actually get rid of any of the, the liquid. So what we can do is we can take the hose pulley through to the nether, place it down over a large pool of lava. And uh, while 10,000 blocks does sound like a lot, I don't think it's that much. I think it's maybe 21 by 21 by 21. Is that right? Almost. It's like maybe 22 by 22 by 22. Almost. That's 9,000 blocks. But uh, basically, you need like a 25 by 25 by 25 block area full of a given liquid. And if you have that, you can then place the hose pulley on top of that liquid and basically pump an infinite amount of that liquid out of it. So to make the hose pulley, doesn't look too bad. We do need a dried kelp block, and right now we don't have that much dried kelp. Uh, we also need another copper casing, which should be fine. Uh, let me go and grab another one of our regular old casings, and also let's grab some more copper sheets. We can then, of course, as we did earlier, combine those up in our currently working mixer. We then do have enough kelp, which is fantastic. We can take that and smelt that over in our rainbow furnace. 
That's going to allow us to craft up the block of droid kelp, at which point we can get the hose poly. We are then going to need to get ourselves some ender tanks to allow us to pull the, uh, the lava back from the nether to the overworld. Thankfully, we can purchase ender tanks from the eShop. Let's get two of those. Submit and submit. The only other thing I think we're going to need is a fluid pipe and then potentially a, uh, a pipe upgrade as well to actually extract faster from the hose poly. Uh, we could also do with our crank as well to allow us to uh, initially lower the hose poly to its desired level. So now if we head on through to the nether, we just need to find a large pool of lava, which I think we should have basically right next to our nether portal. We do, nice. Now I'm fairly certain that the hose pulley will tell you if it's acting in infinite fluid mode. Uh, we can always go a little further afield here just to be safe because I think that uh, the area right by where we spawn is a little shallow. But if we come over to here, for example, and we put down the hose pulley, uh, I think you could put this anywhere, by the way, like I could put it up here and then we can use the uh, the crank to, uh, to lower the hose pulley down into the lava. Once it's down in the lava, we then need to extract from the hose pulley like this and into our tank like so. So if I set this to extract, is that going to work? It is currently set to extract, even though you can't really see it there. And if I do this, this is full of pink slime. That is to be expected. Let me do a quick slash home. That is because we need to, uh, to color our ender tanks because right now we already have ender tanks being used to move all of our uh, pink slime around. So let's grab just a little bit of blue dye which I like to use mostly because it's the easiest to make. We can then do a quick slash back and then let's color this uh, white, blue, white. And you'll see this is full of lava. It's got uh, 32 buckets worth of lava. And if we look at the hose pulley, you can see that it does say bottomless supply. The target body of fluid is considered infinite. So this is gonna produce an infinite amount of lava. And that's it, it's done. It doesn't require any active stress kinetic power. It will just continually produce lava and pump it into the ender tank, which is a little bit insane, but we can now make sure that we chunk load this area by going to FDB chunks and clicking on the chunk that we're in. Let me F3G. I've, of course, I've built this right up against the chunk boundary, but that's fine. We just need to make sure that this chunk right here is loaded. Nice. We can then get rid of those chunk boundaries, do a quick slash home. And if we go ahead, uh, and place this ender tank down, we can see that this is pink slime. But if we do this, uh, if we do this, it's now full of lava. Nice. So that's that bit taken care of. That should be infinite lava available for us. The next part of the problem is the blaze cake base itself, which we need to do using the mechanical press over a basin. And we need cinder flour, sugar, and an egg. So the first ingredient we need here is cinder flour. Cinder flour, thankfully, is potentially the easiest ingredient for us to automate because the netherite can be made with the material stoneworks factory. Do we have what it takes to just make another material stoneworks factory? The answer to that is no. And to do this the lazy way, I'm just gonna go ahead and steal some of, uh, steal this other material stoneworks factory because I'm fairly certain we're not going to need more than 2,048 silicon for the remainder of the pack here. We can take this material stoneworks factory and place it up here somewhere. So I think what we will do is we'll place it down, maybe right about there. We'll then grab another flux point. We can then place that down right about here, make sure that's connected to our network, which is this one. Also, I did completely forget to mention that of course we did set up our induction matrix in the live stream, which has been slowly but surely backing up on juice. We currently have 760, so about three quarters of a billion RF stored up in here, which sounds like a lot, but it's probably enough to run the fusion reactor over here for about like seven minutes, which is not long at all. However, um, I think we'll be more than enough because we don't need to run this for seven minutes straight. We only need to use it to generate individual resources, which is fantastic. Over here, let's grab our ender tank and we'll put that down uh, potentially right next to the uh, material stoneworks factory that is completely fine and then assuming this is the front let me see if i can get this set up correctly if i set this to pull is that going to pull lava in it is not oh of course you need to extract from the bottom of the uh the ender tank i always forget if i do this now it's working okay so i think this is the right side that is filled up with lava fantastic we'll then just go ahead and make another sink they are very easy to make especially now that we have all of that clear we can put that down on this side set the left side to pull into the top slot there 
like that. That's going to begin filling up with lava and water. We then want to set it to netherrack and nothing. We set the rest of these to nothing. That's just going to produce netherrack. And then we want to make sure that netherrack is then pushed out of the front like that. That's going to place the netherrack into here. That netherrack is then going to make its way down into here in the form of cinder flower. Nice. We then need to take that cinder flower and craft it up or compact it up, sorry, with sugar and eggs. So sugar is makeable in a couple of different ways. The um, Obviously, we can grow it from sugarcane. And there are a couple of options here as to how we could grow sugarcane. However, somebody in the Twitch chat did request that I try and craft this using uh, chemistry, which is seems fairly simple to do, actually. The, uh, the sugar cane we can make in the compactor. And in fact, the sugar we can make in the compactor from sucrose. And sucrose is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which are not too difficult to get. Carbon we can get from our coal, which we have an infinite amount of uh, being made right behind us. And hydrogen and oxygen you can get from water, H2O. And the water is also infinitely acquirable from the sink. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe our chemistry does add a way, it does the atomizer to turn an actual liquid into an element, or in this case, a compound. So we can use the atomizer to turn water into the element that is water, and then we can use a dissolver to break that water down into hydrogen and oxygen. We can then send that hydrogen and oxygen combined with carbon over to a combiner to make sucrose, and then a second combiner to make sugar. We can then take that sugar and pump it into a basin that's below a mechanical press, and we should be good to go. At that point, the only thing that we need is eggs. And for eggs, I think just a regular vanilla style massive number of chickens is going to get the job done for us. We do need some more calcium carbonate and we do need some protein. We're going to have to get at least one regular chicken first and then ideally even more regular chickens after that. So let's see if we can't make like a stack of eggs here and then use those to get an infinite amount of eggs going forward. Once again, chat has pointed out uh, that we don't need to do any of that. We can just use our delightful dirt. So we're up here. If we turn off our mob slaughter factory so we'll set it to redstone mode uh, run with a redstone signal we can then uh, open this up temporarily the reason this is currently not working is due to the fact that this uh, floor is covered with grass if we break the grass it should start spawning passive mobs very quickly including chickens we can then quickly cover this up so we don't lose any of those animals but if we grab a, a mob imprisonment tool from industrial fog going what this is going to allow us to do is grab and move any individual mob uh, for us of course that mob is going to be uh, chickens so uh, if we can get in here preferably before all of our chickens die we should be able to grab the chicken like so and we can then take that chicken and place it elsewhere so all we need to do now is set up a little area where the chickens can actually do their work and i think it's probably just going to be somewhere up on the wall here i think we can go with a very a uh, simple kind of standard vanilla system here. If we just take a hopper, place that down above, let's say, a regular old storage drawer. We can then box this area here in like so. And then from there, we can just start to fill this in completely and utterly with chickens. We do, of course, have to make sure that they can't get out. And so we might end up dropping them in like from the roof. If we come over this way and we do something like this, we can now just slowly but surely move chickens over from the uh, the delightful dirt over to above this hopper. And those are slowly but surely going to produce just a large number of eggs for us. Okay, so we've got a bunch of chickens in here. I'm not quite sure of the exact number, but maybe like 20-ish chickens. And we're slowly but surely getting eggs. We might need more chickens, potentially. Um, I'm not entirely certain just yet like how fast we're going to burn through the blaze cakes. Um, in order to figure that out, though, we are going to have to just set it up and, and get it going. So let's go ahead and steal this mechanical press. And let's also, for now at least, go ahead and steal this basin as well. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that down somewhere over here. Maybe just like this. Again, we want to rotate this to face that way so that we can have a gearbox there. And then also a gearbox here to allow us to run that rotational energy down and into the mechanical press. We then need to pump all of the items that we're gonna need into that uh, that basin as well. So that is where we're going to need yet more of our item pipes. We're gonna, of course, run the eggs down and into here. Um, we're gonna somewhat awkwardly run the cinder flower around. Like we could run down, but that would cover up the door. And I think, yeah, that does work, which is fantastic. So let's just disconnect this and then maybe just run that across and connect it there. 
Again, we'll disconnect it there so it doesn't connect. And just to be extra safe, we'll also uh, lock that drawer to eggs. And so now we'll set this to extract as well and uh, disconnect this. Oh no, there's nothing up there. I thought there was a connection above that. Set that to extract as well. Uh, let's make sure that we filter this to only extract the cinder flower. So add cinder flower, submit, fantastic. Let's take everything else out of here that's not cinder flour, eggs or sugar. Right now we're not actively making sugar, but we do have a fair bit of sugar in the system. We have about 512. So uh, we'll drop that in manually just to see if that works. It does indeed, it's very aggressive, but it does work. And then we need our spout, right? So I'm gonna go and steal the spout from downstairs, the one that is next to our smelter. Right? Let's take you. And then we'll put this somewhat nearby. So this needs lava, which we're gonna pull from here. And this is where my um, my setup's gonna kind of fall apart a bit. It's gonna get a little bit spaghetti chat, but I think that's fine. We'll put the spout maybe like here. That might seem like an odd location, but I wanna have the depot beneath the spout like that. We wanna make sure that's not connected. And we can put those back in uh, over here. We should replace this with a drawer, not, a, not just a chest, but that's uh, a problem for future Isaac. And then let's get, uh, let's just get another ender chest. There's no, I was gonna run a fluid pipe from here round and into there. But we have infinite cryptocurrency, or we, we, that's not true. We have a large amount of cryptocurrency. We could make infinite if we wanted to, but right now we're not actively making it. So we don't have an infinite supply, but we have more than enough to spend a little bit on another ender tank. Let's put that down like this. Can I rotate that with this wrench? I cannot. It's a little annoying because again, we have to extract from a specific side. So what if I do that? It's still awkward. Let's do this. That way we can use our uh, fluid pipes to extract down and around into the spout, like so. Again, you do wanna make sure that you're doing this on the right frequency. If uh, you have multiple frequencies set up so that you don't end up filling your spout with uh, pink slime. Instead, ideally, we would like lava to be in that, uh, in that spout. So let's quickly do something like that. There we go, lava is being made, fantastic. And then from there, we wanna be able to get the blaze cakes out of here and up into here. And unfortunately, I don't think there's an easy way for us to do that with pipes, simply due to the fact that there's no input filtering on pipes. You can only filter from the output side. So what I might do then, real quick, is uh, take these item pipes and connect them on the other side. So if we do this, that's still connected there. Then we can disconnect the pipe here run this down, set that to extract, and that should, if we extract it, again, uh, only extracting the blaze cakes, which we can do with yet another pipe upgrade, uh, that's gonna allow us to take those blaze cakes up and, uh, and transform them into the blaze cakes that we actually want to make. So we'll do this, we'll take out the blaze cakes, we'll add those to the filter, submit. We can then drop basically everything back in here. That should send just the blaze cakes up there, fantastic, it does indeed, and then that should, Start to work, and it totally does. Fantastic, that's making the blaze cakes that we want. Then all we need to do is send those blaze cakes down over to here, and I have a sneaking suspicion that that's just a little too far away for a laser node, although if I put it there, it might just work. Let me grab my laser wrench. Can I connect you to you? I totally can, fantastic. Okay, that is fine. Then let's grab a couple of laser connectors, which I might end up putting down on the corners, just to make this look a little nicer. Because while we could connect this node directly to this node and it have a diagonal laser, I think it's gonna look cooler if we just connect them like this, where we connect this one to here and then we connect this one to here. So we don't actually have any lasers uh, penetrating the middle there. Um, it's just a little thing, but I think it's gonna look a little nicer. And it's not too expensive either. Let's do uh, this and this, and then let's quickly connect all of these up. So that is connected. Shift right click, right click, shift right click, right click, shift right click, right click, and shift right click, right click. Those are all now connected. Uh, this is connected. Let's connect that up again just to complete the circle. Shift right click, right click. And we'll also do shift right click, right click, connect that up as well. Fantastic. So I think all of these laser nodes are all connected together. So now we need a bunch of cards to allow us to move the items to where they need to go. Okay, so if we're gonna make this work, we're gonna have to be quite particular on the, the filtering here because we have a lot of interconnected 
uh, nodes that are all going to be connected together. So what we want to do here is we want to set one of these cards to extract, and we're going to put that card in here. So that's going to extract from the east side, which is the side facing the depot. We do want to make sure that we grab at least one of these blaze cakes, and we're going to use that, and we're going to whitelist in here. Uh, in order to whitelist, we are going to have to get a basic filter, which is easy enough. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and add blaze cakes to that. Uh, we're going to set that to allow, and then we're going to put that in to here. So now that's only going to pull blaze cakes out because we don't want it to pull the uh, empty blaze cake base. Then over here in the down section, we're going to say insert, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add a filter for blaze cakes. We're going to put that filter in here, leave it set to insert, and then put that in the down direction. And so we should see blaze cakes there. Fantastic. Then we can pick up our mechanical arm. We're going to set this to input, and we're going to set all of these to output. We can then put this down. And then now what we need to do is actually connect that up to our new steam arm here, which is going to be easier said than done. But I think what we're probably going to do is break this, place it back down vertically, like this, which you can do with the wrench, like this. And then I think we're just going to run that kind of down under and around to here. I think that's going to be the easiest way of doing it. So let's get a few more gearboxes and see if we can't connect these two up. And there we go. So this is working. All of these are superheated. Whether or not we can keep them superheated is, uh, is to be seen. I'm going to turn this off temporarily because I, I don't want to be wasting our blaze cakes if we can avoid it. So this is working. However, we do need another rotational speed controller because right now everything that connects to this shaft that's coming from here is going at base speeds. And I want all of these mechanical mixers and these deployers connected to this, but also going as fast as they possibly can. And uh, for that, we are going to need yet another rotational speed controller, which means we're going to have to make yet another spout and we're also going to have to make yet another precision mechanism, but none of that should be impossible. All right, so there is our rotational speed controller. That wasn't too, too bad. And then we'll take our cogwheel and we'll just go and connect this down here. So we'll try and add that into the line. That is going to make this a little bit more tricky, but should be fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down by like one or two extra blocks before I add the, one block should do it, before I add the, uh, the shaft here, uh, before I add the gearbox. Then we'll put down our speed controller like that. We'll then place down our large cogwheel like this. And then that actually, I think, let's just save a gearbox because now we can put uh, one gearbox right here, connect that up like this, set this to the max, 256. Fantastic, that's now spinning at full speed. You'll have to see it. And so up here, this is now basically ready to go. We just need to configure everything. Actually, it's not ready to go. The last thing that we need is an igneous extruder. And I think I'm going to make two of these. Of course, I need yet more uh, copper casing for this. That is completely fine. Let me bookmark the igneous extruder and let's grab yet more copper sheets. Uh, I'm going to make two of these. Let's do one, two, one, two, three, four. And then, of course, give this guy some fuel. Fantastic. Uh, we also need some Constantin gears. Uh, we don't have any Constantin, but that's fine. Constantin is an alloy that we can make uh, utilizing both nickel and copper. That is not going to be a problem for us. Oh, and look at that. We have one block of Constantin in the smell tray ready to go. Fantastic. If we go ahead and pull that out, uh, we can craft the Constantin gears manually with uh, an iron nugget, which is very nice indeed. We don't have to use the gear cast, although we could have done if we wanted to. Uh, I'm impatient, so let's just do one of those to make that cool down just a little bit faster and then let's craft up two constantan gears and two igneous extruders we are then also uh, going to need two magma blocks that we're going to put underneath our igneous extruders along with two buckets of lava and two buckets of water so i think what we'll do is down here i think i'll put the igneous extruders like here and here that's going to leave space in the middle for me to put a node, which is kind of what I'm after. And then we can have the lava and water just on either side. So if we do something like this, that's going to leave the space. And we'll do that just for continuity. And we'll do the same on this side as well. We'll get rid of this one here and this one here. That's where either the lava or the water is going to go. Most likely the lava. Again, just for symmetry, let me grab another gray simulation block. We'll put that down there. And then if we head on back in, which is easier said than done when you uh, you fly out the bottom there, it's uh, it's quite the, 
the trek back around. But uh, we should then be able to uh, to deposit our lava and water there and then just cover it up. The reason I put them here is that we can then put another node right here. And that's going to allow us to extract from the Ignis Extruder and send those items up and around through the node network to these uh, these depots here. So once again here, in the interest of continuity, let's go ahead and somewhat jankily put down a laser node under there. I think the laser node will stop the um, the lava from flowing. Like if I put a laser node here, we can then connect this to this and then this up and around to this. Yes, that's connected, fantastic. We then wanna get ourselves some buckets. Fantastic, let's get two buckets of lava and we're gonna put those here. It does work, fantastic, and here. Nice, the gray simulation block there is burning, that is fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. And then over here, we're going to put down another simulation block. We're going to grab the two buckets of water, one and two. And we're going to put those here and here. And then, of course, we do need to go down and switch out the block underneath the Ignis Extruder for magma blocks. So we need a magma block here and here. And that should allow these to start producing regular stone. It does indeed. Now, we are going to need a lot of stone if we want all of this running um, at the same time. So... Let's go ahead and make some more integral components. I think we're probably going to want to go with the maximum tier here, that being the, uh, the resonant integral components, which thankfully I don't think are going to be too difficult for us to make. We've made the, uh, the hardened ones before. Uh, there is then the reinforced version, which requires the hardened version with some Signalum and some Electrum. Signalum we've made previously. Thankfully, there is a create recipe that makes it super easy to combine copper, silver, and redstone. Uh, Electrum is just uh, silver and gold in our smeltering. And then as for the resonant version, the same again, Enderium we've made before. It's enderpearls, platinum, and lead in the mixer. And then Lumium uh, is also, hopefully, easy enough to make. It's not. They didn't add a custom recipe for Lumium. That is fine. Uh, that does make the Lumium a little bit more tricky. It means we're going to have to first make some Lumium dust with glowstone dust, silver dust, and tin dust, and then smelt that Lumium into Lumium ingots. Still not particularly difficult, uh, but one more extra step that isn't required with the Signalum and the Enderium, but that is fine. So uh, let's see then if we can't make two more resonant integral components. Okay, so a little while later, we've got a stack of Enderium, a stack of Signalum, and we've got 16 Lumium, which we're going to smelt, or 16 Lumium blend, which we made from tin dust, uh, which is tin in the dissolver, silver dust, and a glowstone. And then with all of that, I think we should be somewhat good to go. So we also made some more Invar as well. Let's craft up two Golden Gears. We can then craft those into two of these uh, regular hardened integral components. We're then going to upgrade those to the reinforced via the use of two uh, signalum gears. And by two signalum gears, I of course mean four signalum gears. Let's put those and those back in the system. So two, three, four. That's gonna let us make two of the reinforced integral components just as soon as we get some electrum. That is what I forgot to make. For that, we need some silver and some gold. My first check is gonna to be to see if we can make it in the induction smelter. We cannot, that is fine. It means we are gonna to have to go and do it in the smeltery, but that's not gonna be a problem for us. Once we have some Electrum, let's craft that down into ingot form and we should be good to go. So let's get two of the reinforced integral components. Good stuff. And then from there, let's craft up uh, two, and by two, I mean, again, four Lumium gears. And then we're just missing some hardened glass. I believe we did make some hardened glass earlier. Uh, we did indeed. It's nether quartz, obsidian, and sand. That should all be stuff that we have in abundance, nether quartz we have, obsidian we have, and surprise, surprise, sand we also have. Let's put all three of those in here and then give this a bit of a, an acceleration. I think four is actually all that we need. So let's put all of this back into the system and then craft up one and two of the resonant integral components. Nice. So we'll drop both of those in to each of these Ignis extruders. They go in the augmentation slot and make them uh, four times faster than they would otherwise be, which I think is going to be required. So now let me do a little bit of an inventory clear. Let's get rid of more of this stuff. And then let's grab some more item cards. Actually, let's just go to uh, at laser IO because we're going to need both item and fluid cards. And I think I might actually start with the fluid cards here. We're going to get one of these that we set to extract and we're going to put that into the bottom of this node here. So we're going to go down and extract. That's going to extract the water from the sink. And then 
We want six more fluid cards, which means we are going to need more buckets here. Uh, for the first time maybe ever, we'll use the uh, block of iron recipe to make a large number of buckets. And then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's not really much filtering that's required here because we're not going to be moving more than one liquid around. So in this case, we can go over to here and in the north and south sides, we can set those to insert water. That's going to begin moving water from the sink up, round, and into both of these. We're then going to do the same over here. We're going to say east and west. Both have insert. Oh, no, that's not right at all. Take those out. We don't want water in the depots. Uh, we want to do that over here, again, on the south and the north side. And then also over here, this time on the west and the east side. And that should begin to fill all of those up with water, especially if you put them in the right slot. Nice. Next up, before we turn this back on and get this spinning here, we need to do a few things. We need to take the stone from the Ignis Extruder. So let me get some more uh, item cards here. And we need to send that up to the depots, right? So... Let's go ahead and set two of these to extract. And then we'll put these in on the east and west side. Like that. So those are going to extract the stone. And then we want to insert that on the west and east side up here. But that's where we're going to need another basic filter. Two basic filters. Uh, I think you can filter both of these at the same time. Let me take a little bit of stone out of here. And let's go ahead and right click that. Add stone to it. And then in here, we're going to set that to insert filter for stone. Here, insert filter for stone. We're then going to put that in here and in here. And now both of these are going to get stone. Going forward, we might have to uh, increase the transfer speed or, you know, overclock some of these nodes. We might have to make a lot of them faster. But uh, let's just try and get the proof of concept down if we can. Then let's grab a draw. We'll put this draw right above the top node here. This is going to be our lithium draw, right? So we'll put some lithium into here like this. So now we need to extract from the top here, and we need to insert that into the deployers to deploy downwards to the depots. That's going to turn them into Skystone once they've been deployed, which is fine. So let me get more item cards. Again, we'll grab three this time. We'll set one of these to extract, and we're going to put that in the up section. That's going to extract the lithium. Then we need some more basic filters two of them, because we need to specify that we're going to insert lithium. So here, insert card, lithium, insert card, lithium. One of those is going to go here. The other one is going to go there. And again, instantly, we see those uh, acquire some lithium. This one might have taken a lot of the lithium. On the up card here, we can set this to round robin true. So that's going to divide the lithium between uh, both of these instead of just sending it to one, which is exactly what we are after. So these are filling up on lithium. That's going to get deployed and turn the stone into sky stone. So then we need yet more uh, item cards. Because now we need to get two that extract. And we need to get uh, six that insert. The two that extract, of course, are going to go either side here. So we're going to put in one extraction card here and one extraction card here. Uh, both of those actually do need to be filtered because we don't want them extracting the stone. We only want them extracting the sky stone. So real quick, if we grab our crank, we can do something like this and do that one manually just to get as a sky stone. So let's go to the filter, sky stone, and then add that to both of the extraction cards. So both of these are only going to extract sky stone. They're not going to extract regular stone. Then... We need to get, I think, six more basic filters because we want to insert to all of the basins. But again, we only want to insert sky stone. We don't want to insert regular stone. And currently, everything uh, is all connected. So the stone here would get transferred over if we didn't add basic filters. Thankfully, the basic filters are easy enough to make. And getting six of them should not be a problem. So we'll do six. And then in here, we're going to set all of those to sky stone. And then if we just grab all of these, we can also go ahead and put one of each basic filter into each one of these insert cards. And then each one of these insert cards is going to go into the side of the node that corresponds with a basin. So here, 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 and here. So now, Skystone should get sent out. Uh, we do want to make sure that in here, these extractions are also set to round robin and round robin. That's going to distribute the Skystone between all of these basins here 
And then the final piece of the puzzle is to also take lithium from this drawer at the top and place it into the basins via an insert card. So there is already an insert card in here for Skystone. I think we can just hijack those for lithium as well. If we add lithium to that list, lithium will get sent there. So I think that's going to work. I think the lithium will be extracted. It will be round robined to everything. So lithium will go into both deployers and into all six basins. They'll all get an even distribution of the lithium. The stone is being extracted from the igneous extruders and sent to these two depots. The lithium is then deployed onto the depots here. That's going to produce sky stone. The sky stone is then extracted and distributed between all of the basins. That's going to produce all the stuff we want there. The final piece actually might be to add an extraction card to each basin as well because we then need to extract the lithium that's in the basins, like the excess lithium, and send that back around to the drawer up here. This is where things get a little janky as well, but should be fine. I think we're going to need to get a counting filter here because we need to extract all but one lithium. We need to make sure that we leave at least one lithium inside of every single basin to ensure that more lithium can be made. So let's make six counting filters. We're going to take these. We're going to put one lithium in. We're then going to take six more item cards. We're going to set each one of these to extract, and we're going to put the counting filter in. That should, in theory, extract lithium, but always leave one lithium inside of the basin. In doing so, making sure that there's always lithium in the basin to produce more lithium. And I think one thing we are going to have to do here is utilize the channel system. Uh, real quick, we're going to have to put an insert card up here. The channel system is usable here because otherwise we're going to have a card, like two cards in here, one that's set to extract lithium and one that's set to insert lithium. And that's just going to kind of negate and mess things up, I think. So with the insert card, we're going to change it from the channel zero to channel one, which is the orange channel. And we'll do the same on all of our basin extractions as well. So uh, here, we're going to change this to channel zero as well. So now the extraction of lithium from the basins and the sending it back up to here is separate. It's on like a completely separate channel to the initial extraction and distribution of lithium. So no lithium is going to go, for example, from this basin over into another basin. It's going to go from here back up into this drawer, and then that drawer is going to decide where things need to go. Um, we are going to have to make sure that we use a, uh, a key to lock that top drawer to lithium. Do I have any more lithium? I do, because it's going to get extracted quite quickly, I think. So if I do this and this, there we go. That's perfect. Let's quickly go and make sure that all of the rest of these are set to channel one and not channel zero. So I think that we are pretty much good to go here. Let's give this a try. Um, actually, before we give it a try, we do need to get some more cogwheels because the last thing that I want to turn on is the mechanic alarm because I don't want to waste our blaze cakes if we don't have to. Um, so before we turn that on, let's make sure that everything else here is connected up. Placing down cogwheels like this means that if one of these uh, mechanical mixers is spinning, they're all spinning. And then from there, we need to make sure that we can get these deployers online as well, which I think is just going to require a few gearboxes and some uh, creative shafting. Okay, so this ended up being jankier than I thought it would be, but I think this here will work. We've used six gearboxes, so we're going to have the gear power here, or the shaft power. The gear is going to go down, and then shaft power is going to continue on up into this, like that. So we'll have a shaft uh, gear there, cogwheel. That goes up. Then these three gearboxes go up and connect to here to spin all of the mixers. And then the gearbox here is connected to this one, which is connected to these two. These go forward and connect up to the deployer. So I think this somewhat compact little system is what is going to allow us to duplicate resources, uh, specifically elements. So let's give it a try, shall we? If we put this down here, Things begin, and things begin going very quickly. The sky stone is taken. The whisks are going down. We want to see basically the whisks down permanently, which is obviously not happening, but the system does work. You'll see we're gaining lithium here, 21, 22, 23, 24. Lithium is being made. I think basically what we need to do now is just increase the speed of everything. I think we need overclockers for all of our nodes and for our cards. I think the node overclockers are more important here because I think that the, um, because some of these cards, a lot of these cards have, oh gosh, yeah, the crank is just going, eh? Um, let me uh, <laughs> get rid of that. <laughs> um, 
Let me take this away. The uh, Because we have a lot of cards that are doing a lot of stuff, like this top card here, I think the node overclockers allow a card to use... I think we only need two. I think basically you need one overclocker per one extra card that you want the node to be able to use simultaneously. So for the sides that have like two cards, we need two node overclockers to allow them to use both simultaneously. Or maybe just one, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, yeah, so I think it can use one at a time. But then if you add one node overclocker, I think now it can use two at a time. And then if you put in eight overclockers, which is the most, it can use nine at a time. So I think only one is required, actually. And then for nodes that have three cards, I think these need two. And it basically just allows the node to do the, the uh, to use all three cards at once. Whereas without those overclockers, I think it just uh, kind of cycles through them. And so it's still pretty fast, but not as fast as it could be. So now that we've overclocked most of the nodes... Actually, all of the sides of the nodes that I think need overclocking. Let's go and get some of the regular, like, card overclockers. These ones here. I'm going to get a bunch of these. 51 is, is a lot. But um, we want to be able to accept, like, the extraction rate on the lithium to high and, and fast. That's going to move that lithium around quickly. Because we want the lithium getting to these deployers as fast as they can, right? Uh, you'll see the next problem is the extraction rate on the uh, the stone, by the looks of it. Like, the stone is not being extracted fast, uh, fast enough. So let's do... This, again, we'll transfer a stack per tick, if we can. And we'll do the same over here. We'll transfer a stack per tick. That's probably excessive. Like, they probably don't need to be going that fast. But this is more ideal. This should allow a lot more of these to stay full on Skystone, which is exactly what we want. Next up, I think we're going to want to uh, speed up the extraction of the Skystone. Again, we'll do the same thing here. We'll set it to, like, maybe we'll set it to, like, 32 per tick. I'm going to set this to a lower number. I'm going to set this to like 16 per tick just because I want to make sure that the round robin is still working. I feel like if I set that to a stack per tick, it's probably not going to um, round robin as effectively. I think it might send a stack to the first one and then wait to send a stack to the second one, which is not exactly what I'm after. Whereas now I'm hopeful that's sending that round in, uh, in good time. It looks like all of that is receiving Skystone, which is good. And uh, we're still not full upon lithium. Like our lithium is still being distributed around. Um, I think we do want to make sure that the deployers are a higher priority. I'm going to set these to priority one, whereas all of the basins are set to priority zero, because we want to make sure that the lithium is going to the deployers first, because the deployers are needed to make more Skystone, which is what is needed to make more lithium as well. So that should be working. Though I can't help notice you're not working. Next up, I think the, the, the thing that we might want to speed up is the extraction. Again, like here, I think we want to extract as much as possible. Like we want to pull that lithium out. Uh, everything, again, you'll see it is leaving one in there. But uh, we want to extract the lithium as, uh, as fast as is humanly possible for us to do so. And send it back around to the drawers. So the problem now is that uh, we didn't set up that sugar automation. So we have sugar, obviously. And we can add the sugar to the system here. And that's going to bring everything back online again. Uh, right now, they're all just not spinning because they don't have superheated uh, blaze burners underneath them. As soon as they do get superheated blaze burners, uh, they should get going. And again, this is what we want to see. We want to see, like, the, the whisks ideally constantly in there. Um, now you'll see the problem is the water. The water is not being extracted fast enough. That, again, is fine. It's a solvable problem. We need to go down and then set this to max, basically. Transfer as much as we can. 8,000 millibuckets per tick is perfect. That should hopefully keep these nice and full. And again, you'll, we want to see these whisks constantly down, which they are. Nice, look at that, 200, 210, 220, 30, 40, 50. Like, we're making a lot of lithium. This is nice. And so this is the system that we plan to use. And I will come back in a second and automate the sugar cane, because otherwise, without the, the sugar, we're not going to be able to keep this running for very long at all. Uh, we can do this, but it's not going to be permanent. But this system right here is what we're going to use to generate large amounts of specific resources so for now i'm going to leave this running to generate large amounts of lithium let me get a um a storage upgrade here uh, and by that i mean let's get quite a few of these uh, storage upgrades if we can which we definitely can do here just to uh, to make the lithium draw nice and big because we want to be holding thousands of um of lithium so if we're going to use our chemistry to automate the sugar we're going to need the dissolver the atomizer the compactor and the combiner the atomizer here is the uh, the first step, I think, for getting water. And then the compactor is the final step, which is where we're going to get the sugar from. So 
putting this somewhere is going to be the tricky part. Let's put the atomizer down. Uh, if we grab some more item pipes real quick. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to disconnect that just in case that causes any problems, which it might. Let's put the atomizer like here. Uh, that way we can just extract the sugar that we get as a final product down into the basin on the same line we're already using. So going into the compactor, we need a combiner. So we'll have a combiner there that can extract down into the compactor. The combiner here is going to make uh, sucrose. This stuff right here will lock the recipe. And then before that, we need carbon, which we're going to get from a dissolver. So let's take one of our dissolvers and put that maybe... Ooh. Let's put that like here and here. So we need uh, coal going into here. Then it's going to go across and get... Uh, that's going to turn it into uh, graphite. We then need to break the graphite down into carbon, carbon down over into the combiner. That combiner is then going to uh, get the carbon. We then need the hydrogen and the oxygen. That's where the atomizer comes in. The atomizer is going to turn uh, liquid water into actual water, but then we need a further dissolver. So I need one more of these actually to turn that uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen. So let's do, again, somewhat jankily. I'm thinking about the fact that we have a sink over here. We can get out of the sink, but that's actually fine. Let's do this here. Let's do this here. And then let's make one more sink. And let's put that here. So we want to be able to extract the water out over into there. That's going to be fine. Let's grab a couple of flux points, if we can. We can put one of those here to connect to all three of those. Fantastic. Uh, we can then put another one of them maybe here and connect to that. And then from there, we could potentially... We could potentially just use energy pipes, but you know what? We'll just put another one down here, connect to that, and then we'll just request one more. Why not? And we'll put that down underneath the um, the compactor over here. Let's do that. And boom. Okay, so this should be receiving water. It is. It's making water, which is fantastic. We're then going to take all of that water and extract it around into here. So we'll set that to extract. That's going to receive water, and it's going to make hydrogen and oxygen. Then... Over here, we need coal. So coal is currently all the way over here. Now, there are a few things we could do. We could get maybe like an ender chest system or something set up to, uh, to actually move all of this. Or, alternatively, given that we already have a um, a very eyesore pipeline set up across here, we could do something like this. We've made this wonderfully compact system over here. But uh, if we just do something like this, we can run coal across the room over and into our dissolver. That's going to make the graphite. Then we can extract all of that graphite over and into here. That's going to make carbon. And then we're going to need to get ourselves a um, another laser node here because uh, and for that we're going to need more uh, laser connectors because we used all of our logic chips to make overclockers. So let's make another stack of raw chips and uh, go ahead and drop those in like that. That's going to get smelted instantly and is going to allow us to make some more laser connectors. And from there, some more laser nodes. Uh, the reason we have to use laser nodes here, uh, as I've shown previously, is that even if you lock a recipe in the combiner, the combiner still allows items to go in the extra slots, and if there's ever an extra item in, even if it's an item the combiner needs, like extra oxygen, it will stop the recipe from working. So we need to do this and this, and we can use the uh, item pipe for extracting here, that's going to be fine, but we have to use laser IO with a counting filter to make sure that we never have more than 64 carbon, 64 oxygen, or 64 hydrogen in the combiner, at any one time, which should be fine. For that, we're going to need two more counting filters, which does require another set of basic filters. That's not going to be a problem. We then need some more item cards. I think four item cards is going to do it for us. We're then going to set two of those to extract and two of them to insert. The two that are set to insert are what are going to get the counting filters. One of them is going to get a counting filter for carbon. And again, we can just put a stack of carbon in there. That's fine. The other is going to get the counting filter for uh whoops for hydrogen and oxygen so hydrogen and oxygen uh we might run into some slight problems here with overflow because there's twice as much hydrogen being made here but no that's fine because the uh the sucrose requires twice as much hydrogen as well that's perfect you love to see it okay so in that case let's set uh you to extract anything you to also extract anything we then want this one here, 
that should only put in a stack of carbon mix, and then we'll do the same here. They should only put in a stack of hydrogen and a stack of oxygen mix, and then both that hydrogen and oxygen uh, will be combined with the carbon to make the sucrose. The sucrose will go down into the compactor. The compactor we are going to have to set specifically to the recipe for sugar, so uh, we're going to have to wait for our first bit of sucrose for that to happen, but then once that's done, we should be good to go. At this point, the only thing we're missing is yet more overclockers in this scenario though we only need the card overclockers not the node overclockers because we're not using more than one card in any side of any one node so let's just set you to extract a stack at a time and then we'll do the same over here we'll set you right here to extract a stack per tick that should fill these up this is going to work nice and fast those are going to get exported around there let's request a few more ultimate pipe upgrades just to make sure everything's running as smoothly as it possibly can be let's go boom and boom and boom i don't think this is gonna be our bottleneck no the atomizer's got loads of uh, stuff in it that's fine and then down here we just need to make sure that this is set to this and there we go that is good to go the sugar should get extracted and should get sent down here it is indeed at this point the only thing that is slowing us down is eggs actually uh, so this is all working we've got six thousand lithium so we got the lithium nice and quick which is good but the trouble is eggs we're not getting the eggs in fast enough okay so we weren't getting eggs fast enough to keep up with the speed of our create contraption so what i've done is I've moved the chickens up onto the roof to allow us to get more chickens in here. And what I've also done is I've gone back through to the nether and I've got yet another mob spawner. The plan here is that we're gonna craft up a chicken spawn egg, this one right here, using some charm fragments, which we should be getting over in here. We are indeed. We can then combine those up with just a regular chicken egg to get the spawn egg and then, just like we did with blazers and with wither skeletons, we should then be able to transform our regular, I think right now it's an imp spawner, into a chicken spawner. That's the plan, and that's hopefully going to allow us to get a large number of chickens. From there, we can just use something like an item collector to collect all of the eggs instead of a regular hopper, and we should be good to go. So, let's get rid of the cobblestone here, let's shift right click this away, let's right click with the chickens and then now just like we did before we can use things like sugar and clocks to increase the speed at which chickens spawn okay so it turns out that chickens need grass to spawn i do also think that we're still going to run into the issue of them not being able to spawn uh, due to the fact that there are too many chickens here there are a few things you can do to counteract this uh, if we look at the spawner we can see all the upgrades you can use a dragon egg to ignore the conditions completely, um, or you can use a gas tier to increase the number of allowable maximum entities. Uh, it says the modifier cannot increase above 32 though, which is not ideal because we need well over 100 chickens for this to work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the spawner real high up and then we're gonna place down the grass. I'm hopeful that the way this works is that we can place vector plates on top of the grass and then just have all of the chickens pushed towards the uh, the center and have them fall down and because the uh, the chickens don't take fall damage they uh, they should be fine so we'll do this we'll grab one more dirt just to make this even and my hope here is that uh, much like the the mobs before them that the uh, the vector plates will work and so we'll put down vector plates pushing them all to the center like that we're obviously going to get rid of the cobblestone beneath it and we're already getting some eggs which is fantastic so we'll have the vector plates pushing them all towards the center like this okay so they do spawn but somewhat awkwardly only with the spawner at ground level so i think we're just gonna have to swap the block that they get pushed to so they get pushed around and into that block there so if i take my vector plates and do something like this that should work and they should get slowly but surely like it's gonna take them a while to fall down but they should slowly get true uh, slowly but surely get added to the pile there uh, we could of course make the vector plates faster there are faster vector plates available and uh, we can also on top of that uh, accelerate the speed of the spawner if we're going to accelerate the speed of the spawner it probably is worth accelerating the speed of the vector plates but to be honest i think this is fine uh, the chickens are coming in slowly but surely we don't want to leave this on forever because of course we don't want an in infinite amount of um of chickens we only want enough to get us enough eggs to keep things going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, regular item collector and then I'm going to upgrade that 
uh, with an eye vendor, which we can have our system craft for us, into an advanced item collector. And then from there, we'll just grab a regular old storage drawer. We'll place that down uh, probably right over the hole that we just made previously. So we'll do something like this. We'll put down the item collector like that. That's going to collect almost all of them. We're doing to increase the, uh, the radius here. Uh, we don't to increase the Y range, just the X and Z to make it larger. Uh, and if we go in here and click range shun, uh, we can see that the range is now more than big enough to collect all of the eggs that are being generated. We've got 12 eggs in there. And hopefully we're going to get a lot more chickens coming in slowly but surely. And then we can take those eggs and just use a regular old item pipe to move them down into the other egg drawer. Obviously, we don't need two egg drawers, but it's easier just to do something like this and connect this up to the pre-existing egg drawer system. All right, this is working. It looks like we are finally getting enough eggs. You can see here we've got uh, a nice backlog of, um, of eggs coming in. Uh, I did see the blaze cake backed up a second ago. I think, uh, again, much like with uh, these deployers, things move over in batches. Same with over here as well. Things don't always move over instantaneously but uh things are moving over blaze kicks being made i think we're getting more than enough eggs we do have a lot of chickens up there like a staggering number of chickens but this system is indeed working and so now basically between streams we're going to go ahead and leave this system chugging away hopefully we'll come back next time to a very large amount of lithium because we're going to need a lot of lithium in order to make all of the um the singularities thankfully not all of these require this setup it's not like we have to get 50,000 of each of these uh, elements from this system here most of them are makeable in other ways but uh, we are gonna have to do it with a few of them specifically we've kind of run through it with the twitch chat and i think helium krypton and fluorite are the three that we're gonna have to do with this setup so we're gonna have to get enough lithium to produce those and then maybe some extra lithium for some of the other ones potentially as well um but hopefully between streams we'll gather even more lithium uh, we'll get even more Krypton, we're up to uh, 7,000 Krypton here. Again, we need 50,000, so we'll let that keep running and let that keep doing its thing. Uh, I might add a few more um, deployers over here to get even more uh, encrypted matter, because it seems like that is what's slowing us down currently, like this end hand keeps running out of encrypted matter. But we are well on our way to completing this pack. Next time, we'll come back, we'll craft up the ultimate ingots, so we'll go ahead and uh, probably end up finally setting up that wall of storage drawers for each element, getting the periodic table of elements up on the wall. And, uh, and then once we have that, we can then start filling it in. We can get all of the ingots made here. These require a lot of the elements that we're going to need for the wall as well. Once we have all of the ingots, we only need five of each ingot, which means we need 80 of each element, this one right here. Um, again, some of those, uh, most of those even, I think, are going to have to be duplicated with this setup here, which again is why we need uh, a large amount of lithium, because we need 80 lithium for every ingot that we can't make easily otherwise. So like cobalt, we can make easily, but things like uh, molybendum, we're going to have to use the uh, duplication system for. So we'll use our fusion or fission reactors to get one molybendum, and then we'll use this system here to duplicate and get 80. Once we have 80, we'll then turn it into ingots, and we'll put it in the ultimate crafting table, and we'll do that for all of the ingots here until we have five ultimate ingots. Then we'll look at getting the ultimate singularities. Again, not going to be as hard as I think people think it's going to be, but it's going to be harder than some people don't think it is. It's going to be tricky, but I think we can make it happen. We can get ourselves a creative supply upgrade, and then once we have one of those, we can make everything else happen very quickly. But those are all future problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode there.